Hello, and welcome to another episode of Third Action. I'm your lovely host, Jason, and these are the same three pack rats that were here last week. In the bottom left, we have Asher Ford, Human Ranger, played by Char. I have to lean over <laughs> to be in the frame. Hello, everyone. It's <laughs> looking casual like that. You know, it's fine. Ah, Very casual. Welcome to my lounge. <laughs> <laughs> in the bottom middle, we have Greshi Ironroot, Halfling Druid, played by Will. Oh, I'm not used to you saying that. Yet. <laughs> it's ruining my flow. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> uh, and in the bottom right, we have Gun Show, Human Champion of a Rastal, played by Adam. Evening, everybody. <laughs> uh, and let's go ahead and get right into it. So, last time on Third Action, our group of intrepid adventurers um, returned to Zinshalast, uh, or the lower city of Zinshalast, to uh, make plans. Uh, with their allies in the city. Um, the Spared brought you a bunch of items that they had found uh, digging around Shalaria uh, and the surrounding area. Um, you've been sorting through that, found a bunch of cool stuff. Um, you also went to go check in on... Uh, I was going to say Muck Muriam, but that's not his name. Gukak. Uh, you went to go check in on Gukak, the uh, quote-unquote stone giant <laughs> wizard. Are we um, sure that's not his name? <laughs> not all giants are the same, Jason. Especially not ones in disguise. True. Um, yeah, you, you went to go speak with Gukak, who informed you about the situation in the uh, the rising district of Zinshalast. Uh, he told you about how there are uh, a large number of rune giants uh, and their minions still around. Um, he also relayed to you uh, that after killing the rune giants at Shalaria, a number of the um, a number of the non-rune giants that had been fighting uh, the uh, your allied giants down the city seemed to kind of give up um, immediately uh, and uh, switch sides. Um, you learned about the Golden Roads path uh, to Zinshalast, which winds up through the Rising District, um, past a bunch of Karzuk's forces, uh, across a great bridge and up to the, the summit. Um, you learned that there, uh, that Karzuk's forces have uh, created or brought along some kind of uh, disintegration cannons that they've got uh, placed uh, throughout the Rising District and the um, near the Great Bridge um, to potentially shoot you out of the sky. Um, what else? Uh, and you learned from your uh, spared allies that there is a, a secret path um, that you could take that goes under the Rising District um, and potentially bypasses a lot of that. Um, but the spared weren't able to go the whole way because they start to run out of air as they as you go higher and higher up. Um, you learned a little bit more about the uh, the occlusion field and how it gets stronger and stronger the closer you get to the peak, and how the uh, the pinnacle of Avarice, uh, the building at the top, seems to have some kind of hard outer shell. Um, of the occlusion field that's impossible to penetrate without the rings. Um, you know that it's really cold up there. Yeah, I think that's everything. <laughs> that's a lot of stuff. If you want to learn 100% of what happened, go listen to last week's episode on YouTube uh, <laughs> or on your favorite podcast platform. Uh, looks like we've got some favors coming in from chat. Uh, so uh, we ended at around 7 p.m. Uh, the party was is staying overnight at Shalaria to do some uh, handing out of items and uh, other clerical work, I, I guess, uh, strategizing, etc. Uh, I believe Grushy had a thing he wanted to do this night. I need to work on my bracers a bit and see if I can get this uh, Sahedron rune off, converting it into something less uh, problematic. All right. Um, and we talked about this in chat, so you you can basically do a rune transfer, um, basically pay the rune transfer price and do the crafting check uh, with an easy modifier, 
to kind of adjust the rune, uh, the rune's shape into your um, version of the uh, protection rune um, to basically keep the right. resilience effect but remove the other effect. Should have pulled this up before I uh, before I get the table up. And the easy modifier, what's the change in that? Uh, that would be minus, Does that minus one? Minus two. So it'd go from DC minus 40 two. to DC 38. Aye. Okay, so DC 38 on this. Um, but to bring the time down from the day that normally takes for that to, I think, half was two. And then bring it down to two hours would be four. So that would bring it to DC 42 to do it in uh, two hours. So it doesn't all right. take all night. Um, well, I'll give it a roll here. Looks like I've got two points at the moment, so I'll use those. Uh, yeah, it looks like that is the case. Uh, points. Thank you, Lucetius and Cap for... Uh filling our, our lads back up a little bit. <laughs> Every bit is very useful. Chat had it's to go too... crazy in the last couple episodes to <laughs> help you guys get the wins. <laughs> Some <on>. things happened. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Uh, so we'll give this a quick roll and see how we do. All right. Oh. I'm going to have to use my hero points right off the bat because that's a natural one. <laughs> that is a natural Oof. one. Oof. Strong Jeez. opening. Don't do this to me today. It's a lot nicer number. Okay, that's a 47. There we go. All right. A 47 is enough. Oh. Um, you spend the couple of hours. So you said that was two hours. Uh, one to two hours. Uh, yeah, I had two hours total. Um, tinkering with the rune on the bracers. 5,000 gold of reagents uh to convert the the rune into your own form of resilient rune um it's a little bit of a hack job uh there was one point where you were worried that you had uh, met if the other two were watching it's like magical sparks are flying um there's like a, a small explosion um where you had like accidentally uh i, I don't know connected to uh ley lines wrong on the uh, on the bracers mm -hmm. and uh, cause some kind of backlash, but you managed to figure things out and get it working. Uh, so now magical welding sort of situation. Yep. Your bracers are now sahedron free, as it were. That is much more reassuring now. So hopefully, we don't have to be quite secretive unless somebody decides to sport a ring. But I don't think that's a good idea yet. All right. Anything else you guys want to do? Uh, I'm going to assume during that time you uh, gun relays the information about uh, that Gukak was telling him in private during the last conversation. Yeah, basically, uh, that's. I'm glad that Greshi took those off because otherwise, I think that all of our plans would have been um, spoiled. Sent to the sent straight to the enemy. Hmm. Could have been a problem, but while well, we're talking in spells or whatever. Um. Yeah. So we couldn't say exactly out loud what our plan was at that time. But uh, he'll he'll get the gist of it tomorrow. Huh? Okay. Fair enough. I mean, Gracie's working on these right now, so. We'll learn tomorrow, I guess. All right. So you head to bed then. Uh, nobody else doing anything this night. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, 5 a.m. is the earliest you can wake up. Uh, when do you actually want to wake up? You've got the choice is yours. The power is yours. I mean, if we went to bed early, waking up early seems like a good idea. It sure. does. We still need to figure out how we're dealing with the lack of air. 
the days are short. It is now Eel Day, Abadius the 30th. It's bright and early in the morning. So, the sun is just cresting the mountains. Just <laughs> barely. <clears throat> we have a few spells that can help with bubbles of air. We have the bag. Not a great way to travel, but it does hold air. Right? It does. Just note that you is, uh, can't have um, other... I, I forgot about this last time, but you can't have that's a good point. other extra dimensional effects inside the bag of the player. That's a good point. So whoever's so on the outside will have to go into carry all, all of our bags. bags. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, I mean, that's still maybe the right way to go. Chat oh. says, hold your breath, run real fast, go full Sanic. You that's know, kind of that, my plan. That is the plan at this point <laughs> in time is we use uh, shrink to try and shrink people down to size so they can fit into the bag more comfortably. And then we just hang out in the bag, which we have put air into. And Gon just holds his breath for a while. It's a level one spell that lasts one minute and has no heightened versions. Why which, does it have no heightened versions? It seems like it is actually surprising. prime for like prime candidate for increased duration at a higher level spell slot. Oh, I guess that's like a reaction spell. It is a reaction spell. There's no uh, variant on it that is not a reaction, unfortunately. Hmm. So I, I agree in principle. That that would be nice, but. Uh, Gon can hold his breath unnaturally long. That's true. And I have, as far as the elements goes, we do have that wand of endure elements we picked up that's heightened a fifth, so it actually should do pretty well against the cold. Mm -hmm. um, it won't. I don't. If, if it's extreme, extreme cold, it might still get to take some damage, but it should reduce quite a lot. But we don't really know how far we're going to have to go in this uh, environment. This is true. I do not know how high up or how long that section would be. The, could we... I mean, I don't know if the... Was the it the tent, spared were saying that they got far enough up to note that they couldn't breathe and they had to come back, correct? Mm -hmm. um, would they yes, have any they, idea how much further it was? Um, <clears throat> let me check my notes. Um, let's see. So the what's death, the official name uh, of the tent? The tent doesn't provide any kind of oh I, um the yurt no. explorer's, explorer's yurt. Um, mm -hmm. let's see. Death it zone begins at about twenty six thousand feet. Um, so let me show you on the map here. Oh, camera's not linked. One sec, camera. Come here, camera. Okay. Um, let me get rid of these little AOE guys. I think those were just to show you where some pockets of enemy activity were. Um, so the peak is here. The zone of, uh, or the death zone, the like 26,000 feet area is like that. So once you're in that region, you're basically going to be outputting uh, or expelling air faster than you can breathe it in. Um, Normally, I would not take an idea from the chat straight up, but I actually was <laughs> contemplating this before it was made into an idea that might actually function. <laughs> we could try water breathing if we make ourselves some sort of like dome that you can wear. And fill it with water for the decanter. And then cast water breathing on yourself. It's uh, a little so, bit roundabout, but... It, it, it seems very roundabout, but since, as you said, there isn't an actual not-breathe-air spell for some reason. Besides a low-level one-minute-you-can't-breathe reaction. There are a couple of high-level one-minute as well, but 
Well, still one minute. Yeah. I get the feeling this is going to be a long trick, which is why I'm actually thinking, assuming that there's space inside that's safer somehow. If you want, finding... you could try to, like, I would allow you to use a like a much higher level spell slot to try to make a like a mm. one hour version of air bubble. Um, but that would be, Ooh, be happy to try. That would be a let's see. Um, you're a nature caster, so it would be a nature check. Um, and expel a. <laughs> Let's see. Could you make something that would hold air? I can make a bottle that can hold air if I can take some time to do so, but I have to invent it first. Um, so hypothetically, I can bottle oh, yeah, some air, air but yeah. I don't know how... There is an air bottle, but I don't know how great that is for distance traveling, but we could definitely try that too. It, uh, it looks like it does not end no it takes one action to breathe from it so i suppose if you can hold your breath for how long can you hold your breath for now gone um you just trained a lot ridiculous amount of time uh, like really strengthen the core there times longer than normal so like an hour in the neighborhood well, what's, of an hour uh Yikes. so normally okay come on uh, it's what is something the control? Called rounds. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, 25 times longer than I think usual it's con bonus plus setting. 10. Oh, they, they, they patched it down slightly, I think, then. Uh, and the number of rounds <laughs> normally... Breath. 10 plus con modifier, I thought. Be nine, not like but something button. like that, yeah. Oh, no, they didn't to... patch it. It's always 25 times. Okay. Um, you can hold your breath for a number of rounds equal to 5 plus your con modifier. So, oh, what's plus. your okay. what's your con mod? Uh, guns should be four or five. Probably four. Maybe if I use next level. 4 plus 5 times 25 is... Actually, no. Might be 5 now. Hmm? <laughs> no, 4. It's five still 4. Level. Okay. So. Okay, so 9 times 25 is 225 rounds. Uh, around... Uh, what? Divided by 10? 22 so minutes. 22 minutes? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So... Again, given ideas elsewhere. Going back to this underwater bottle idea. Can I make this air bottle that you breathe out of, but just make the bottle big enough to go over the head? Yeah, I, f I feel like you'd... Uh, What's the normal item mileage? Called? What if someone breaks the bottle? It's out called bottled this, air. Out of this water breathing plan by doing it without the water. Well, I'm saying in this case, it would be bottled air, but just a large bottle. But what instead if of the regular smashes size bottle. the bottle? You don't smash the bottle, the you just uncork it. Bottle you take a breath. You breathe no, yeah. like an enemy shoots me in the head and the bottle crack, like, breaks. That does like problem, that's true. It's like the decanter, <laughs> but for air. Yeah. Like, well, if just, someone comes at me and smashes me in don't, the head. Don't get shot, though. Then. Um, so you think you could make, like, a kind of, uh, like, a mouth mask sort of thing, like, for diving? Um... Hmm. Where it's like the bottle, but you've got kind of, kind of like of a mouth hole that you uh, attach to and then strap it to your uh, face. Um, it would muffle the sounds of speech if you were to do that, but... Could still work. Yeah, you think you could... It would only be... It'd be At like least the, be hands-free that way. Yeah, I would call it like the very hard modifier on top of making bottled air, so... It changed the DC from 23 to 27. Hmm. Yeah, that would be rough, I'm sure. 
Um, well, I mean, I can definitely make it. It'll just take me some time. How many could you make of the regular one? If just making bottles air, um, I mean, I can make one twenty-seven plus eight, so thirty-five. I could probably get us to get one out in two hours, thereabouts. I still have to invent it, of course, so it'd be about, for the three of us, <laughs> a total of eight hours of work all sold. Mm. And regularly making a DC 35 check. That's another whole day. Mm -hmm. We do need to breathe, though. Yeah. Alternatively, I could make one and we could go back to the plan Pass of it around. we go back in the or that works too. I was just going to say the two of us hide in the bag and you just jet. The big thing being you only have to take a breath every 22 minutes, I guess. I have a feeling that one breath every 22 minutes is not quite exactly what they were planning. <laughs> no. Like after <laughs> I I think that might be if it were me. I would set that up as more like a 22 minutes in one shot thing. And then at that point, you need to recover for a bit before you can do it again. I believe in you, Gon. But who nah, knows how long. That's fair. Would, that, would I need any recovery time between holding breath while um, traveling? So, I, so the uh, a thing to note with the holding <laughs> your breath for... Uh, that many rounds is that every time you like take actions that aren't just walking, you use uh, you use up extra oh, rounds of too. breathing. Um, the question was just what's the logistics of using this to? I, I would just say you move at like three quarters speed or something um, to effectively keep huffing the air while you're while you're moving at a at a regular enough pace to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. oh. That sounds reasonable enough to me. No, just let me take the one, day. Okay, one bottle of air, and then now I think we're going to need access to everyone. Plus, if we, as Asher said, if it breaks, then we're just screwed. So we should. No, I agree. One, so if well, our lives are dependent I, on it, let me. I'll have to take the day, but let me take the day, and I can start working on it. Uh, see how far I get in eight hours. And I'll okay. start uh, getting ingredients together and tossing coins into the bag and such. Nothing or into for the it, chest, I suppose. Excuse me. All right. Well, first of all, you need to actually uh, invent the item. <laughs> it's all hypothetical so far. Right. <laughs> so far, so good. But I'm pretty good with wind. So I feel confident about this one. Um,. So, to shorten it, the DC from where it was to, uh, excuse DC me, to shorten it to, to start uh, it then. 27, it, shortening it down to two hours would take it to an additional eight up, so that's DC 35. Okay. So to roll this on, um... <laughs> 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 what have we invented today? <laughs> so <laughs> your natural so is one is a regular failure. Is a thirty-five, <laughs> which would have been a success, but is instead a failure. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's gonna take me a little longer than that. <laughs> uh, I think. Right. Well, that's. 100 and what, 160 down the drain already. All right, that's fine. Yep. So, more ingredients, we'll just go again. <laughs> I mean, what are the odds that that happens another time? How many natural ones on a critically... Or, or you can just roll a... <laughs> wow. I, All right. I don't... But okay, that's... <laughs> so natural 20 for a, a 54. They on Greshi's, Greshi's mind is all over the place first thing in the morning and 
<laughs> apparently it takes him some time to get going. You have to fail to succeed. <laughs> I, I perhaps just went entirely on the wrong track at first in terms of how to bottle air. Maybe it's just the idea of like trapping it versus enticing it or something to get it to actually stay inside the bottle the way he, that Greshi wants it to. But uh, it takes an extra couple hours, but he gets it something done. All right. Uh, well, you're now right, you've Joe. got <laughs> the plans are, are ready. You've got some like experimental, like small bottles of uh, of air that at least hold air for a little bit of time. Now you have to put it into practice to craft a, a proper device. Something in there. Well, uh, let's try again. Uh, this, see, that's fine. Uh, 46 on this one. So critical success. All right. So now that's T minus three twenty. Um, and once a, more. F- sorry, on critical hmm? success on crafting, nothing special, right? It only matters if you were going to use using time. Okay. Correct, but uh, even then, it's not great. So we just keep going. All right, uh, another one air bottle. That's a great roll, but sufficient. This is a forty total on this one. Success. That's a second air bottle. And third one, uh, forty-four. So a uh, third air bottle. Um, and that's sorry, each of these of you had twelve hundred to... gold. What was the time you reduced them to? Two hours each? Uh, two hours. So that was a total of two 10 hours I would have spent crafting today. Aye. Okay. And 1,200 well. uh, gold in reagents. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me, I guess, make a air bottle. Uh, sorry, bottle there. Aye. Bottle there. there. Okay. You just add it, I suppose. Ah, sure. Here. I have a bottled air. I don't know if that worked. Oh, there we are. Everybody gets a bottled air. Okay. Um, I could try and create something for the uh, the pits as well, but I feel like that's the extra time we don't really have, so... Yeah, we'll just end up having to keep uh, Rocky in his pocket and Phelan in the bag, Maybe I suppose. Back. Or you can mm-hmm. share with with him. All right. All right. Well, so you've got then it's basically like a leather cord strapped uh, to this like uh, glass bottle tube um, with a, a nice little mouthpiece to uh, speak into um, and breathe from. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it connects to your uh, maybe it's like big enough for your mouth and nose. Um, and yeah, oh. you can you can let them hang loose for a bit. Oh. But even even when you try uh, like getting your first breath, you realize how um, how little air you've already been taking in uh, up here on the mountain. You've kind of acclimated to it, but um, it's definitely the case that with how high up you are, you would have already been getting less oxygen per breath. Um, a little heady and woozy at first. Oof. Okay. Well, mm. The three of you now have a source of oxygen, and it's about three p.m. Yeah. Uh, oh, I didn't. Uh, one, you, I guess, one more hour then, if you're gonna prep spells or anything. I guess you haven't oh, really sure. done spell I, prep yet. Yeah. So, four p.m. <laughs> I uh, working. During that and day, it's... I suppose the rest of us could do some planning and preparing as well and probably talk to Gyukaku and Gyukaku again <laughs> and uh, give him a little bit more details on our plan. Okay. Um, um, and and what the delay means. All right. What we're doing today. Yeah. you The two of you converse over messages in the courtyard again um, while Greshi is working on the, uh, the air bottles. Uh, and he... He basically tells you that uh, whenever you're kind of getting ready, um, he can start a, a kind of a faint push um, with a large number of troops into the city or into the Rising District. Um, without Sahedron rings themselves, they won't be able to 
get too far through the Rising District. Um, but it will hopefully provide enough of a distraction and pull attention away from the pinnacle um, to give you guys some, some time. So uh, basically, whenever you're ready for him to do something like that, uh, you can give him ascending and he, he will... If he gets ascending from you at all, uh, regardless of what it says, he'll he'll start the push. Okay. Just in case there's any kind of static in Good the way. Plan. Good plan. Um. I can only hope hmm. it works. And don't kill yourselves up there. Should you need to retreat, um, we will try to hold the city for as long as we can. All right. <clears throat> With this, um, I was just looking through my bag. So the wand of misdirection, it seems like the point of that is to use it where you, um, you use misdirection to basically disguise all of the magic auras of all the items that someone's carrying. So maybe before we leave the group here, we could, well, it'd be hard to, we don't have enough for all three of us. I don't know if there'd be, it would be worth it to, uh, even overcharging the wand. It lasts a whole day. It could help, um, sell the illusion that we are with them because they would have they could have some people there that look like they've, they're carrying extremely powerful gear and we could look like we have nothing. Hmm. Now, if you're if you're talking about this with Gukak, um, well, it's possible that even even with one of you here, that would be enough to cause some sort of concern on their end. It's probably worth doing, even if we don't have enough to use it three times. Oh, yes. Um, are there? Is there anyone our size in your force that we could disguise this way? Mm. And perhaps one of the spared. That could work if they're willing. I'll. Uh, I'll ask to accompany the giants as a, as a sort of distraction. Some of them have been scouting the tunnels near here. I shall some, I shall call for them, uh, and Gukat will call for one of the spared uh, giant scouts. Will go find one of the spared scouts. They'll come back and um, uh, y yes, sir. I'm, I'll, I'll be glad to help. Oh, in that case, uh, hold still. I'll dig through my bag where I've sorted all the wands and stuff, grab out the Wand of Misdirection, and cast it so that my auras appear on the spared. Okay. The rest, until next uh, daily prep. Yep, there's a kind of, uh, you, you feel a little bit weird as uh, there's like a magical transfer of energy between the two of you. Um, but since the spared has basically no magic items, uh, you become itemless effectively. Um, or actually, he gets your aura the appearance of ours. So yeah, I don't think it swaps. I think it's one directional. Oh, is it? Yeah, from looking, I mean, after looking at it again, there's a target and a source. To resemble one or the other. Oh, you designate the primary target, the secondary target. Text that would defect, detect the primary target, detect the same auras from the secondary target. I see, I see. Okay, so yes, you still keep your auras, but they also have your auras. And you yep. can dismiss the spell from up to a mile away. Okay. Wait, okay, that's it. Um, maybe that'll give them a little bit of an edge in there distraction attempt. We shall see. Kukak nods and to... directs the uh, gun spared to stay near him. I think we're getting ready to leave now or in the afternoon today. Good. So. Well, 
May the gods be with you then. And also with you. <laughs> uh, Gukak will head out with the spirit in tow uh, and some of his forces. Uh, they're going to go check out the northern gates. Uh, you return to the group. Presumably. Did Asher do anything in that time period? <coughs> uh, I don't know, but I, I do have a cool fact about cockroaches <laughs> that I learned. <laughs> cool. Uh, is that they don't need air for up to 30 to 40 minutes and I can be a cockroach so that's what Asher was learning <laughs> about him certainly something I suppose I don't know if that actually would carry over to a Pathfinder thing but I was curious I'm like I know cockroaches are really annoying like can they not be uh, give me no, I, give me a nature check for, for Asher then see if he knows that yeah <laughs> does he know about this I'll set the DC to your level. Uh, what are your guys' level? 19, so 39. Hey. See if he knows obscure cockroach facts. A 41 for my 41. obscure cockroach facts. <laughs> Asher spends his time <laughs> thinking about obscure cockroach facts and uh, realizes that a cockroach would... Uh, be able to survive for some time without air. Probably be fine. That's a good fallback. He's thinking about all his animals and potions and stuff. And he lands and on I suppose that you don't have to be a fact. You don't have to be a tiny cockroach. You could be a big one. Oh, even better. <laughs> I don't know if I can be a big one. So I can only do pest form, I think, because that allows me oh. to do insects without insect form but i think anything higher i need insect form okay i, I thought you might have had insect form so it would have to be very small oh hello tabletop rolls I welcome did welcome at one point. oh hello. thank you for the raid hello everybody we're getting ready for a hike all right so asher just <laughs> asher's important. sweet cockroach facts uh will maybe come into play <laughs> all right so it's 4 p.m Badius the 30th, wheel day. What would you like to do? You're off to see the wizard? I need to cast spells. Oh, casting spells first. Let's right. see. Yellow brick road. To we uh, sorry. I'm sorry, I actually cast that. <laughs> so status on everyone. I can okay. overload. Uh, let so me put these on the characters while I remember. So that's uh, status on everybody. Yeah, I did it right Life work. connection. Uh, that'll be on Asher again. Seems maybe a little more haphazard than it used to be. So it took a bit of a dip in uh, HP. But uh, just so status funny. on everybody. Ocular overload. Life connection on yourself linked to Asher. Correct. Okay. And uh, then endure elements heightened to fifth. Um, I'll be casting it twice myself and then using the wand uh, to cast a third time. Okay. And that's on the three of you. So we get the three of us. Okay. Correct. Uh, anything going on Rock or Phelan? Uh, Rock will just stay in the uh, pet cache. Okay. For the time being. And is that everything? I think if we're, are we going to go off and go oh. up? Because if we are, I'll long strider myself as my spell. Um, Unless we're just wandering. Well, you know what I'm going to do is, I wish I had another spell slot for this. Eh. I'm going to be rude and I will cast Phantom Steed for myself and just for myself. <laughs> All right. But I'm going to be taking Phelan. He will be going into the bag of containment with air bubble cast upon it. 
All right, and Rock will, will be away. In the pet cache, Phantom Steed is out, so you've got a, a Phantom. Uh, hmm, what would be up here in the mountains? Uh, not much. I'm not sure, like a an elk or maybe yeah, a moose? sure. I like an elk. Let's do an elk. A majestic. Oh, I, I thought you were going moose with that. No, elk is good. Everyone goes moose. Elk's great. <laughs> a majestic elk. Uh, Asher's casting the ah, AI long strider. Um, I am indeed. I'll assume that you gun did a sending to Morgiv to have him come meet you at the. Yes, I'll. Uh, at Shalaria. Morgiv? Yes. yes. We got the ring of messaging. The messenger's ring. All right. Assuming that's where, if that you were going to get Morgiv to go to the. Um, take you to the secret tunnel. I didn't think it had to be more Gieve. I thought we were just going to take one of the spared that was already. Oh, it doesn't have to be with us. More Gieve volunteered, but, uh, but no, any, of the, great. any of the spared can do it. Absolutely. Let's bring him. All yeah, right. Let's bring him with us. OK, anything else? Hmm? No, let's uh, get, get move on, I suppose. OK. Uh, in this case, I think Morgiv is going to be your slowest, at least to get to the tunnel. Um, but from... Um, if th what is his speed, actually, now that you uh, say that? 25. His speed is 25. Mm -hmm. I'm going to... Can I put him on the horse, or is that going to interfere with him helping escort us? Um... <laughs> like, does he know how to ride a <laughs> an elk? Uh... I don't know. You, I mean, you can teach him. I, at the very <laughs> least, we could lead him on the horse because we're faster than he is. Sure. Yeah, you can you can conjure so the, level the phantom one elk one. for him and kind of teach him how to. It's going to last for and like I will eight pass hours. Long Strider so. on myself while we're at it. We have a level one wand of Long Strider that we can use on him as well. Right. Uh, have you used that yet or? Nope. I mean, if you want to use it, I paired it today. So all right. Then that way we'll all have long strider. Okay, We're okay. ready for striding long. Yeah. Let's all right. Go. Long shank strider. The, the hour long long yeah. strider, which I think should be enough to get you the uh, four thousand eight hundred oh, feet. Use this. I can't figure out how to. Eight two miles. You know what? We should probably just keep it in. That's way. one mile. <laughs> uh, two e travel speed. That's my speed. Someday I'll start is that a the session that's only? open. It is. That's why. Uh, that's why I was saying I, I don't have trick magic item to use the wand of Longstrider anyway. Oh well, that's unfortunate. And it's. You should just take this back. Is it? Uh, it wouldn't be divine, is it? It's arcane primal, of course. Yep, arcane and primal. Yeah. Yes, What's your speed divine, then? Without any uh, boosts, thir I suppose. Thirty-five. Okay. Well, I mean, that means we're all keep, you're. We're staying up <laughs> with you. It's fine. Okay, um, so yeah, that push uh, boots him up to 35 speed with long strider. So that's your slowest. Uh, you can go three and a half miles an hour. Uh, so a third of an hour ish. Uh, what's 60 to five? Three is 20. Uh, it's probably like 15 20 minutes. minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll say you you're able to get here. Oop, that's not right. We'll do it in 15 minutes, uh, which, 5, 10, 15. OK, so by 4.30, you, as a group, uh, make it to a large ruined building um, at the northeastern part of town. And let me, oops, that's failing. Uh, Greshi gun and where is he? Morgiv. Oh, Morgiv is apparently not linked to his. That's okay. Uh, uh -oh. Morgiv. Okay. All right. 
So the group of you have made it to uh, this large building. Um, it's um, it's a massive stone structure uh, on a small uh, hill. Um, on either side it is flanked by two massive towers, uh, one of which is clearly in just col fully collapsed. Um, the other is pretty badly damaged. The, the whole building, in fact, is, has seen better days. Uh, it has a large number of kind of impact craters in the roof. Um, it looks like the ceiling has crumbled in many places. Uh, there was probably a, an upper floor, but that upper floor is, is long since gone. Um, there are no windows or anything like that. Um, but there are two massive silver doors um, at the top of a set of old stone stairs. Um, there's also a, a simple sign uh, in uh, Thessalonian um, as you make your way up the stairs. Um, and it reads uh, Shalast Museum. Morgiv uh, kind of slowly makes his way up towards the doors and um, uh, our, the scouts found this place um, a few days ago. Um, it, the tunnel should be just inside. And he'll kind of make his way up to the doors and slowly start to press them open. They I creak, opening into a dark Seems... or dimly lit room. Greshi squints his eyes. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, Greshi can't see inside. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. No, he can't. We should have yeah. made monocles out of my uh, sure it's goggles. Clear. One for each Safe. of us. Um, the scouts didn't report any problems, um, but I, I suppose that could have changed. Well, let me stay close to you. Uh, okay. The Morgiv will step into the dark building. I'll step up next to him peer around <laughs> it's definitely a bit spooky Greshi seen... steps into the darkness <laughs> unable to see <laughs> Greshi's going <laughs> to sure of... tap <laughs> gun on his, the back where I imagine his shield is kind of stored at the moment or where are you keep holding it right now oh uh, yeah I'm I guess there's like a days. little bit of he's going to tap your shield and say do you mind if I get some light in here um, let me see what we can do Tables have turned. <laughs> no, I'm asking permission. <laughs> well, sure, go ahead and put light wherever. But... Knowing that I can't see, I did in <laughs> fact prepare light today. All right. You cast light. And we'll cast it on Gon's shield if he doesn't mind. All right. Um, I mean, kind of if you don't mind. Start aiming that around <laughs> like a searchlight. Ooh. Okay. There we go. Um, Gun's searchlight shield uh, begins to illuminate the room. You can see uh, to the left and right are what appear to be uh, counters um, draped with uh, some old tattered cloth. Um, on the other side of the counters on either side of this kind of entryway are some ruined pieces of furniture as well as a set of silver doors. Um, so there's a set of silver doors to the left. Uh, behind a counter and a set of silver doors to the right behind a counter. Um, just ahead of you, there's a, a, a silver and gold fountain um, made of three uh, that kind of just picks three dragon's heads, uh, spitting what should be water into a, a pool, but um, there is no water spilling out. And in fact, whatever water is in the basin of this fountain is just completely frozen over. Um, you can also see up ahead what look like a number of um, display cases that have all been shattered 
Um, some of the displays are probably seem to still be uh, there, but maybe broken and partially intact. Um, but you need to get closer to to look at any particular display. Um, yes, I, I think it was uh, in the back, um, and uh, Morgiv will kind of point uh, straight ahead. There's you can see there's two passageways uh, that lead around. Uh, kind of like a pillar of wall past the fountain. And Morgave will kind of just start okay. walking in that direction. Do, do, do. Just tiptoeing quietly. Be... I'm going to keep an for... eye out as we go for things Okay, so you're it's you're dark seeking. and scary, and I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm seeking, um, okay. and I do have keen eyes for whatever that's worth. As I'm looking around for things that might be hiding from us. Okay, so you can kind of see off to the sides uh, that there are. There's definitely more uh, museum off to to either side of you as you're uh, progressing forward. Um, but, Greshi, since you're specifically looking out for anything weird, uh, as you pass the fountain, you glance to your left and notice that all the way to the west, um, there seems to be kind of an oh. eerie purple light coming from what's probably uh, the, the western tower. Um, and you can see a number of what look like relatively intact books and scrolls scattered about the floor. Morgiv doesn't notice this. There, he's just there seems to be something. For. Uh, go on, Asher. Do you see this uh, purple light over over here? Morgiv, hold up. Oh, she's kind of wandering in that direction, kind of automatically. It's kind of curious. Please. Morgiv. Morgiv will chameleon form mm-hmm. himself and go invisible. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a good wow. idea. We're going to have a quick look around before we proceed. I don't know about these purple lights in a I mean, abandoned they're... building. I, I agree, but I'm I, I am curious. You I curious? can't help it. Right. Gun, you pass by what looks like I'll a back you up. um a model of the the city of Zinshalast in its prime. Um there's uh, Asher, you're passing by some small display cases that seem to maybe once hold some artifacts of some value, um, but seem to be empty now. Buy artifacts. Uh, are you guys sneaking? Move to the front. Okay. No, uh, not much well, point in that with this giant. Yeah, I guess you've got a big light. I can <laughs> turn it off if you want. That's, I asked specifically, but. No, it's fine. You're not. I do agree that unfortunately we kind of need to see. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna yell hello. <laughs> Who's there? Hello, but, the uh, home. Hello. <laughs> Is that the right? Start... Nah, I won't yell. Um, I'm gonna kind of watch out for any kind of traps or like runes drawn on the floor or. Okay. Um... Uh, give me a secret perception check. Okay. I've stepped on. Too many, um, <laughs> too many traps. Yeah, too many traps. Too many traps. <laughs> I almost had it. Then I got, uh... there we the go. internet That's delay. Hmm. I'm kidding. It was simultaneous. <laughs> mine. That's what made it funny. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, Gun. You're you're keeping a careful eye on the floor and the ceiling and around. You've also got um, your arcane eye, I think, that lets you see uh, kind of detect magic as you're looking around. Um, You can definitely see uh, what? I assume it's evocation, right? Yeah. Um, You can see the kind of evocation energy uh, being emitted by that light. Um, It doesn't seem to be a trap. It seems to just be kind of a a dim light uh, (coughs) That's it, it's basically just a kind of a dim light spell. Um, 
Okay. You also pick oh. up on, you notice that one of the, uh, the books um, that's on the floor, um, you notice a kind of shift and kind of rise up and like flip over uh, and then kind of get pulled uh, uh, like from the floor up uh, out, out of sight. As if someone had like picked it up off the ground. There's, there's something active in this area. Um, okay, we I'll thinking be, a life. Just kind of passively. Every time I'm looking at something, Jason does this becomes all right. passive. True so, deception. Just so we all remember. Okay, so yeah, you, yeah, you have the same thing too. Um, could be some kind of a oh spectral thing oh too. right is... shit sorry you both have no no I don't have true seeing Asher has true seeing all the time I have detect magic all the time right and what's the range on true seeing sixty okay sixty okay that's good to know <laughs> okay. yeah I'm just gonna keep okay. like clicking on it every time I think it might be uh, of you gonna... yeah Asher's the furthest in the forward. back so he hasn't noticed anything yet. I'm following Gun at a respectable distance. Um, going to have Mender, which I prepared this morning in my hand. And I actually think I'll pull Phelan out. Was not expecting to need him out so soon, but just in case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll have my bow out. Uh, did I have Phelan? Where is he? Because I'm not trusting of any of this. No Ooh. more trust. <laughs> Okay, you some more. pull Phelan out, he boof, as he oh, lands on the that. floor. <laughs> All right, boy. Uh, I'm going to be there in about two more creeps. We're going to sneak. Okay. You carefully, cautiously sneak into the room. Gun, you can see that book that uh, that got moved is floating just above this table here uh, to the north. Um, this this uh, chamber, this tower, appears to be maybe the remnants of a large library. Um, the There are massive uh, racks of books um, all around the outer perimeter of the tower um, that stretch up a couple hundred feet. Um, there's also a, a big central pillar uh, that also would have been stacked with books in its in its heyday. Um, but you notice that most of the books on the shelves and scrolls and things are all in tatters, um, aged and worn down by time and the elements. Um, Certainly, it's very reminiscent of the uh, the library, the other library we found mm. at uh, Jorgenfist. It's true. In its design at Jorgenfest, yeah. Love their circular libraries. Let's just respect our old libraries. How terrible. Um, and I'll also there's that, and I'll point to the book that's floating. Ooh. The book suddenly drops to the ground, or drops and like clatters onto the table as you kind of step out scared the book. We mean you no harm. We saw your light and didn't expect to find anyone here. Asher, you can see the vague shape of um, a kind of large hulking figure. um, Very broad of shoulder. Um... uh, fairly tall, uh, about as tall as a giant, um, possibly as tall as a rune giant even. Um, but they oh don't, they don't have like a rune giant's face. Uh, they're, they're wearing kind of large, uh, bluish purple robes or see, they seem kind of faintly purple in this purpley light. Um, and you're only seeing them kind of translucently, uh, but kind of peeking out of the robes is a very like square shaped head. Um, with no mouth, but two very small uh, uh, white lights for eyes. Um, it's 
looking oh, at it, okay. its its hands are kind of open and it's it's in kind of maybe like a scared defensive posture uh, like it's trying not to move like it's a it's been spotted you said that in Thessalonian um, which gun actually does have already by the way Grishy. Um and uh, just then we're just kind of holding still and waiting for either something to happen or who are you I should just step in a low voice rumbles through the room passing through and trying to evade some enemies of ours we mean you no harm just trying to be safe ourselves there's a pause oh sorry uh asher you you see the creature lower its hands um invisibly uh (laughs) um uh, sorry what was gretchen going to say i was just asking if it was speaking thessalonian back or if it was speaking in a different language um it spoke oh if if Gun spoke in Thessalonian, did spoke back in Thessalonian, yes. Okay. Okay. Um. Hmm. The creature waves its its hand and <laughs> dismisses its invisibility. A massive <laughs> Bluish purple golem mm. stands before you. <laughs> Information. Protect. Reclaim. It says. And casually steps over to one of the tables. It's kind of piled high with books. Worthy mission. You are not affiliated then with the claimer. He's the claimer. Making a guess at who the claimer is. We are not. I see. Then enemies we are not, it says, as it begins to lift uh, a damaged book off of the uh, table. Um, and uh, between its hands starts to kind of generate a kind of electrical energy. As it spreads its hands apart, the, the book starts to spin and mend itself, um, reforming into, like, page... Uh, scraps of pages start to kind of like flying into it um, and it seems to be kind of magically repairing the book why here then this magically repair uh, in fact we oppose the claimer and we're passing through here I shall not stop you. You are free to pass. I'll just nod. Turn to the others. You just want books or something? I mean, I'm not going to try to take books. Are you going to try to take books? No, I was just asking if that's what he's up to. Seems to be. Who's the claimer? Um, Do you know who it is, Gun? <laughs> it's it's got to be Tarzuk claiming the whole city. Claim. Claiming the whole world, basically. The I mean, golem crying. turns to you as you're kind of whispering amongst each other. Yes, Karzuk, the claimer, was his title in the olden days of Thassalon. 
this knowledge I have gleaned. What is your name, friend? I'm Gun. Most call me the Golem, but others known me simply as Paizo. <laughs> Beautiful. That's a, that's a very appropriate name. Mm. What a strange name. <laughs> <clears throat> I am a guardian and gatherer for the Akashic Record. Information lost must be reclaimed. So, so when you mend a book, does the book somehow remember the information that used to be in it and it comes back? Or do you end up with like a blank book that just look or it says like blah, 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 blah. So Normally, it, the pages would be blank, but there are special techniques, advanced ancient spells, which can remember what the book has forgotten. Does this guy maybe know how we could... Do you remember the... There's this... Um... The scroll we have, the one that's the artifact, the um, in other uh, no, the other one, the other artifact scroll, the one that you can ask questions to. Oh, the quill, yeah, that's not a scroll, but what was it? The quill that was it was the quill, he writes questions and it then he writes questions, yeah, yeah, that one. I wonder if he knows any information about that. That's tied to the Akashic Record, isn't it? Possibly. Also might be tied to that um, peacock god. Or both. <coughs> yeah, we... So we actually have these two artifacts. So should we show them to him? Should we ask him about their nature. Maybe he knows. Greshi will pull out the Anathema Archive. The golem looks in your direction. Do we want... Should we offer it? Could you... Are you familiar with, with this? That's a very Object. good thought. What the hell is, are my looking at? <laughs> is there anything I can even fathom as far as what Paizo does and how many doors it makes? Um, sorry. <laughs> right. I well, I mean, no it's a. <laughs> it looks like a, a very large some golem, sort of golem made of stone. Yeah, um, kind of purplish blue stone. It's wearing like kind of but I don't uh, imagine wizard's I'm... robes. It doesn't have a mouth, so you're not really sure how it's I, speaking to you. I, I never thought of the Akashic Record as something that would have to have, like, investigative reporters working for it before. I mean, information's created all the time. Now it has I, to be gathered, doesn't it? Now I kind of like that idea. I thought it was just sort of an essential part of the universe. So are you musing about that in character or out of character? The... <laughs> in character. Gresh yeah. going to offer the Anathema Archive to the Golem. The... If it wants something to read, this might be up its alley. I guess you, that like, you crazy. <laughs> ride forward towards it. I'd step inside. I... Okay. And so approach with offered. the Anathema Archive are offered. Uh, it reaches down with its massive hands and kind of plucks it from your uh, grip uh, and holds it up and its eyes kind of flash um, as it's like seeming to process the item. Um, <laughs> this Infinite loop. is a powerful artifact indeed. Why do you bring this here? It holds dark secrets. 
should we get rid of it? Are you familiar with it? With its history? This was the Anathema Archive. It was created by the great Archwizard Zinn in Thassalon's days. It harbors many dark secrets. It is dangerous in the wrong hands. Very dangerous indeed. We've done our best to keep it safe and hidden away. But but, uh, somehow I just feel that if we can collect enough information about it, maybe we could do something to purify it or... Hmm. I don't know, make it, use it, put it to use for good. It can be used for good, but it can never truly be purified. Knowledge this dark is sometimes not meant to be known. I can store it, if you wish. It's information, the Probably. good that it has can be gleaned and kept for record. It might be safer than in our custody, to be honest. But this, I don't, I mean, we don't really know very much about this guy, but. This offering. Hmm. I accept it. Do you have anything that you wish to know? Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, what quite do you a lot. mean? Um, <laughs> I'm still holding out the archive. You're not I, doing I this. I thought he was holding it. Well, well, he pulled it out took for it. him, so if he wants it. Well, yeah, I mean, he, he already he's he, got it, then, yeah. Yeah, he took it from you, and he's holding it, and he's like, it. in so between his on for? thumb and index finger. <laughs> Do you want this back? Actually. <laughs> 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 yes. It seems rude. Do you want it back? The golem will place the Anathema Archive back in Grushy's hands. <laughs> All right. Um, you I wait actually can agree with Asher. Do we want it back? Um, maybe not. If you guys if, make if the use of it, I used to. Uh, well, out of character, I is that the one that you talk to the dude? No. Okay. No. This is <laughs> I, the I, one I where you open it up. and it messes with your mind, but then you cast a spell or okay. or learn Under lore conditions. about something. Or learn more about something. See, that's the one that I don't want. The one that makes you crazy. Yes, this is the crazy. this is the one that makes you crazy as you glean okay. dark secrets from beyond the veil. The I, the item that allows you to talk with the the peacock spirit is the, the uh, quill. The quill. Oh. The revelation quill. All right. How is it that you're here, so close to Karzug's? Um, home territory undetected and and freely doing your thing is this the, is this safe to leave in your custody this was the only time and space available to me if it were not now at this moment this information would be lost forever. That doesn't bode well for us, does it? I do not know what the future no, I holds. Guess not. All I know is that yeah. this is when I was sent to. 
this information here. Take this with you to your knowledge people, and I think we're done with it. Very well. Wait, who's, who sent you here? My masters Somebody at the Akashic Record. They are beyond knowledge. Ah, where is... Of course they are. There is something that I want to know. And that's how could we destroy the quill? Wait, supposedly, why do you want to destroy the quill? <laughs> supposedly the method of destroying the quill could only be learned by tricking the quill into revealing it. Because it's just a tool that lets you talk to uh, the peacock spirit, which is probably just another one of the rune lords. Yeah, we don't actually know who's on the other end. We could ask who's on the other end. Maybe he knows. He... <laughs> Maybe he could start 69. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know this object, but if you present it to me, perhaps I could find out. Alright, I'll pull the quill out as well then. Okay. You produce the revelation quill, and he holds out his palm. You place it there. Uh, he brings it up to his eyes, and his eyes flash again. Spark of uh, magic goes off. Um, this item, it was once held by the rune lord Xandergul. It was infused with powerful energies to contact him from beyond or from from any plane if you are well, speaking with a consciousness it is almost certainly him how exciting a pen pal <laughs> where he is, I cannot say. And he'll let you take the quill back from him. Alright. That is that then. Did you know no. that he was the only rune lord, well, one of only two rune lords to never have a successor? I did know that. Yes. Interesting. Mm. You are knowledgeable indeed. Is there anything else you wish other... to know? Who was the other? Was it Sorshin? Yes, the Rune Lord of Lust. Hmm. That's right. Well... Do you know of another way through the occlusion field? Besides rings or whatever else. The Use the Sahedron to get through. There's a field up above. You seem to know quite a lot. I was wondering if you might know about that. Ah, the distortion effect that is surrounding this mountain. Yes. There is... I have seen those with the rings able to pass through its effects unharmed. I do not know if there is another way. Hmm. Yeah. Don't to ask. Don't know if we have any other information to ask him. The uh, rune lord Karzu built it to protect there. his fortress, the pinnacle of avarice. Seated high atop Marm de Seif. Mm -hmm. How much time remains before Karzug's resurrection is completed? The golem shakes his head. I cannot know the future. His resurrection was, according to some documents, supposed to be concluded after only 100 years of slumber. 
his assistant Khalid was to reactivate and bring him back from the demi-plane in which he was had trapped himself. But it seems that that plan has failed in some capacity. Did the Rune Lords, they knew that the Earthfall would happen? It seems that is true. Karzug at least knew, perhaps before the other Rune Lords. He had plans set in motion in the event of catastrophe. A last ditch effort to keep his dream of conquest alive. All right. Well then, I've got one more big question. Um, do you know what was the nature of Earthfall, the event? It looks at you and maybe seemingly trying to appraise you in some fashion. It was a form of punishment from the deep, the deep ones against the Islamti who betrayed them. It was meant to destroy this planet. But the gods intervened. They were known as Aboleths, the creatures who rose humanity from from the seas. They were, in a way, humanity's progenitors. Why? Um. <clears throat> hmm. And the gods averted it. Which gods? All of them? Appreciate it for whatever that means. Um. They could not see Galarian destroyed. Hmm. The goddess of the moon intervened. She was able to block the majority of the... Well, assault. That is why the moon is so damaged now. Which goddess of the moon was it? Uh, which goddess of the moon was it? I don't remember if it was Desna or... They chucked a rock at us. Yeah, they chucked a real big rock it at us. It wasn't Desna. Uh, it wasn't Desna? Which, which one moon. was it? Do you know? I do. Okay. A Kavna. <laughs> a Kavna? Okay. <laughs> a Kavna. A Kavna died from the effects All right. of a trying Kavna's to protect dead. the world from Earthfall. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're catching me on lore that I don't fully remember. <laughs> no, you were doing well. I mean, that's why I was like, you know, dig in. Um, apology, apology to the lore heads out there. <laughs> My lore is really focused on like exactly what the rune lords were doing and only kind of tangentially on <laughs> what was happening also. I'm like, I don't think it was Desna because Desna's still around. I'm pretty sure the moon goddess got no. absolutely wrecked. Uh, yes, it was absolutely a... wrecked. Pissed off some other gods. <laughs> I. It was a Kavna. She was the deity of the moon for the Aslanti people. <clears throat> she is gone There's now. Another, um... hmm. There's another lost deity that I've been pondering. For a while, um, although I've lost her name at the moment. The Sala. The, one, the uh, 
Yeah, Lusala, the uh, the rune goddess that oh, with the head preceded the Thessalon, M- Thessalonian Empire. Um, is she, she was a goddess of virtue. Out there, in a way, yes. She has not lost all of her power, but with a majority of her followers gone, her influence has waned significantly, especially in this corner of the universe. Ah. Uh, and she still, um, corrupted? The rune magic is still quite powerful, but it's been bent towards sins instead of virtues. I just feel like there should be something, some way to help turn it back. Mm-hmm. I wish there was something that we could do other than potentially removing Karzug and his ambitions from the picture here. The only way to change a god is to change <clears throat> their religion. Hmm. You would need their followers to believe something else. Believe that she could be redeemed that those who exist still indeed yes it is likely that she is gone well sounds like um removing these Sin rune practitioners could definitely uh, help along those lines. Instead, help build up the uh, the positive side of it. It is certainly like that's the best a possibility. Plan. They would also need new practitioners those who espouse the good sides of rune magic and Lusala's work. Hmm. All right, well. That's, uh, that, that's uh, quite a lot to think on. The golem nods and turns to his work, lifting up another tattered scroll and beginning to repair it. Hmm. Well, thanks for your time, I suppose. Uh, Good luck to you. Thank you. You as well. I can't see. Enjoy the exhibits. <laughs> yeah, where are you going? <laughs> I thought I was being clever and going to look around the corner on our way back. I can't see. Hi. <laughs> where are you going? Uh? Um, <laughs> not nowhere. It's the... always kind of dark. <laughs> it really, really is, isn't it? Though this place is damaged, there is still much to learn. The golem says as you make your way out of the chamber. <laughs> There's always much to learn. Oh, thank you, Gun. Uh, uh, let me find. Where's oh, right. I was going to say, where did he get to? <laughs> is, is everything okay? Morgave says, appearing near Gun. Yes, that was actually very enlightening. Oh, oh, good. Well, um, I, I believe the exit was just this way and he'll start walking his way north 
through the passageways. Got followed after. Do do do. You can certainly look at any of the exhibits as you're passing, but uh, Morgave is just kind of proceeding onward. I mean, are, is there anything, anything left to just note what these were, or what might be still here? Some of them. Um, Besides yeah. the signage, of course. Uh, like, is there anything left them, to look at? Uh, many of them still have plaques visible. Um, there's some paintings on the walls that have faded. Um, you can kind of just point at one and ask me what it is if you want. I didn't want to uh, put... <laughs> It's a, it's a very fine line doing that. <laughs> Just tell me about it everything is. in this room. <laughs> but really, I, w I do see this. I do have painting. a lot of notes. I see this. There's a sahedron. <laughs> there's a sahedron medallion that's kind of emblazoned on the floor in the center here, and a big paint into the north of sure. it along the wall. I'd like to. As you make your about. way into this kind of central chamber in the back, um, you see uh, in the center of the room there's a big bust of Karzug. Um, uh, <laughs> In the back, uh, there's a massive painting with uh, gold, uh, gold framing um, of Karzug himself uh, holding his signature uh, uh, burning glaive uh, in hand. Uh, there's a plaque underneath it uh, with a good bit of text. Um, and kind of around the room uh, beside that, uh, immediately next to him is uh a a painting of the first rude lord huff um sorry not hufframa um shit where's my notes 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 open my museum the first greed rude lord uh yes I... the first the first rude lord of greed uh Kaladerne, uh is pictured here the uh there's the second rune lord of greed fethrir uh the third gimel the Fourth, Lignaya or Lignia, uh, the fifth Rune Lord Masmirana, the sixth Rune Lord Mas, uh, sorry, Athusa, uh, and there's a a tiny uh, like torn picture of the seventh Rune Lord uh, Haframa over here in the corner. Um, is that all of them before Karzig? Uh, yes, Karzug is listed as the eighth Rune Lord of Greed. Um, there's also there's plaques under each of them. Um, there's also a few displays around the room. Uh, we have um, the big ones. So these two on the left are about uh, Karzug's past. Um, the two on the right are about Karzug's reign. Um, the set of four here, um, uh, these two on the left and these two on the right are about Karzug's exploits. Would he uh, leave anything in public like this that would be useful to use against him, you think? Like information wise. I mean he's not pride. So probably not. Um maybe some of the um maybe some of the artifacts are real or really valuable, but I I think the uh the stories uh, are unreliable at best. Uh, this center, uh, Asher, you just passed by. This is a kind of a tall case, which has a, a replica of Karzug's glaive uh, with a plaque underneath it. What does the plaque say? Uh, the say? plaque the is striking glaive. glaive. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the plaque describes this as, uh, shit, where is it? Uh, this is, uh, one of the Alara Keen, uh, the Burning Glaive Arbitrage, um, 
it is an intelligent weapon, uh, as all of as are all of the Alarakin. Oh. These are the uh, weapons of the Rune Lords. Um, it mm, is okay. an excessively uh, is a weapon that is obsessed with accruing wealth um, via any means necessary. Uh, it is constantly on fire, able to act on its own, uh, and is incredibly powerful. Can it talk? Uh, based on that plaque, yeah, you think it can probably talk. Would it talk to other people? <laughs> I guess I couldn't figure that out from the plaque. <laughs> uh... Would it talk yeah, to you're me? not sure. It just <laughs> it just says that it's an intelligent weapon. Um, oh uh, it's described the weapon. in Thessalonian as a weapon with a mind of its own. Um, as, as are all of the Alarquin. Alarquin. I can spell that. I'm saying Alarquin, but it's probably uh, chat's not working. Why is that not working? I can't type in chat. Don't know why. Oh, there we go. Science. Alara Keen. There we go. Larkin. Sure. Hmm. Um, but from this, it's some kind of, uh, yeah, blaze, uh, sorry, flaming, probably a greater flaming, dancing, intelligent weapon uh, with the spell storing rune is capable of delivering spells on the impact. I don't know if my last question went through because I'm nope. muting and unmuting. I don't but, think I heard uh, it. <laughs> so these are the weapons of the Rune Lords, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So they all have like intelligent weapons. Do they get buried with them when they die? Or do they just like go to the next Rune Lord? I don't, um, I don't think I would know that just from looking at this, but... The way it's written, yeah. it sounds like it was it was passed down from the first Rune Lord of Greed. Is that I mean, shown in any of these portraits? I was just going to ask that. Maybe it might oh, be... yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, or something you, similar, at least. If you go look at the other portraits, they're all wielding uh, ah. arbitrage. That's good. I would be haunted if this was buried. <laughs> The oh. only one that you can't see arbitrage visibly it's in is evil. the is the picture of Haframa, the the seventh rune lord before Karzug. But that's because oh, that painting that? is fully damaged. Hmm. Okay. I guess he didn't like that one, didn't he? Like I get, kill I that get person. The, get that impression. I. Yeah. What does this uh, placard say underneath of his uh, fancy painting? And also, I was just gonna check and see if anything in here was magical, like the, if this painting is magical at all or anything else. Oh, um, yeah, you're able to pick up um, some kind of equivalent to gentle repose effect on the painting of Karzug specifically. Um, there's a decay. There's a similar enchantment kind of on everything in the room, but huh. it those have all been clearly like the the enchantment itself is broken. So there's kind of like a lingering effect of like some parts of the paintings uh are are still enchanted but it's not enough to actually keep the object uh whole um so it's only that painting of Karzu gotcha. that's like vibrant and still colorful um but the the text beneath that one reads uh Karzug the claimer um his reign is listed as I'll translate to Absalom reckoning because that's the useful date uh, negative five eight three six AR to today. Hmm. You charge a long time. Well, that's um, his view. <laughs> well, nobody's been here to update this, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, it just says to present. It doesn't say like a specific date. Um, hmm. Just let me link. Uh, slayer of the coward Haframa, wielder of uh, arbitrage, master of time and space, and all within.
That seems awful wordy. Mm. Um. Uh, uh, Going well, scratch regardless. Chief asshole. Right Do we know why Roof uh, Haf- Haframa was so disrespected? Besides being apparently a coward. Um, uh, do we know what the story was between them? I don't think so. Asher, do you remember why Hafrava was so disrespected? I don't do I? <laughs> Did we get the general Did I read anything justice? about him? Does your rune uh, flash and give you any insight? Oh, chance? God, my, my <laughs> rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> I was, she says I'm going to forget I have that. something has a flash of hmm. blinding brilliance. You, you can try a Thassalon <laughs> lore if you want. <laughs> From the Wrath Let me, me Thassalon learn. I have so much that I have to remember that I have. Uh, I guess I just <laughs> the curse of a 20th level character. Or sorry, 19th. The early 19th. Yeah, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I... Got a 33, an incredibly average That's so score. That's fine. With a 10 33 for 33. is kind of a... Okay. I remember about those. She slowly turns to Asher, you have my thing. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> might remember. Because sure. I can't anymore. <laughs> mm. um, let's see. What do you remember? Um, your, your mind flashes to... Uh, you're like in a in kind of like a pub or something with some or some kind of tavern or fine drinking establishment um, with some compatriots of yours. Um, and they're everyone's kind of gossiping over the latest news. Um, uh, did you hear that uh, Aframa was slain by one of his own uh, apprentices? Um and the the information you're kind of able to glean from this is that Karzug um, had been an apprentice, a direct apprentice to Haframa, and was his like uh, most vaunted. Or sorry, uh, what's the what's the word? Maybe that was right. Um, he was the most accomplished of uh, the two apprentices to Haframa. The other one being a a wizard by the name of Vage, V-H-A-G-E. Um, Morkiv is informing you of this, apparently, in chat. Um, and exactly... Oh, uh... They would be discussing... I guess from their perspective, they would have gotten like the kind of newspaper version out of Zinchalast, which would have been that um, Haframa had concocted some kind of villainous plot to to have Karzug assassinated, and Karzug acted first. Um, the reports are that Haframa grew jealous of Karzug's um, abilities. Uh, that Karzug was somehow able to push transmutation magic even further than Haframa was able to, um, and that Karzug had made some kind of some new powerful allies um, that had helped him in the development of uh, some new branches of transmutation magic. So that's that's what you get. <laughs> Well, that's. I mean, they all just seem like kind of jerks, if you think about it. But I, I guess I couldn't blame Karzug if uh, my teacher was like, "I'm gonna kill you, cause you're too cool." So uh, I probably wouldn't like him either. In that circumstance. Well, fair point. I suppose that's. No, he's still just a dick. Yeah. Uh, Greshi's going to cast Produce Flame and attempt to burn the large oh. portrait of Karzug. This, is, this building's not made out of wood, right? No, I'm pretty sure it's not. It looks pretty stone. Okay. I'm like, it looks like stone, but I want to make sure. 
Okay, you produce flame and uh, throw a fireball up at the portrait. It catches fire and starts to burn. All right. Just keep moving. Pleased with yourself. Do you know where we're going? We're going no, down but there. I assume oh. <laughs> somebody's going to tell me now that we're here. Uh, I'm just looking at all the lovely... Morgave is standing going. awkwardly near the statue, uh, just kind of politely oh, waiting. Maybe that's... I'm just observing the nice... We're, uh... Things that my DM has written I think about. We're ready to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, sorry. I can, uh, if you're ready, I can. Uh, and he'll uh, reach towards the statue. Uh, sorry, the um, the model of Karzug, and press in uh, the the red kind of ruby gem on the statue's forehead. Um, and yeah. the floor will start to shudder and shake. Uh, well, this for sure seems like something Karzu probably would know about. As the floor gives way so to a, our guard up. Uh, a, a stairway leading down uh, into kind of like a basement floor. Uh, it's the, the big stairway green. area in front of the, uh, the portrait. Um, there's a green light uh, glowing down there, uh, possibly two green lights. See, I don't like that part. Well, there was the purple light, and that turned out fine. Oh, my light went. <laughs> Gun went down the stairs, so does Greshi and Asher. I'll go down the stairs. Sorry, I'll uh, move you all down the stairs. You make your way down the stairs into a uh, small chamber um, of stone with that has four green, uh, ever-burning torches uh, in sconces on the walls. Um, there is a massive rune of greed on a rug, a uh, decorative rug at the bottom, uh, and it opens out into a smooth paved cavern. Um, I, I believe this is the place, Morgiv says, um, gesturing at the, at the passage. Um, okay. I... Well... Yeah, let's uh, let's go see. I see you avoiding yeah, that but... rug, <laughs> and I'm gonna avoid the rug as well. is just standing on the rug. He has no idea. Morgiva, <laughs> Morgiva... <laughs> but uh, Ev everyone else carefully <laughs> walks around the rug, which seems very trap-like to them. Uh, but Morgiva not uh, quizzically looks at you all as you kind of <laughs> flank around the rug. Um, Come along. Uh, oh, all right. We're um, just superstitious. Don't mind us. I, I suppose this is actually <laughs> as far as you need me. Um, the, the tunnels should continue some ways, uh. and then you'll probably be in the Rising District uh, or further. Um, I, I, I can try to accompany you if you want, but I won't be able to breathe for very long. No, you're. Thank you for your help, friend. You've oh, done you, quite a lot for us. You're most welcome. It's been an honor to, to help such amazing heroes. You truly have saved my people. Good on us, I suppose. I'd hear it. It's on the rug. <laughs> Asher he, wants to hug him, but he's on the rug. He, he is on the rug. <laughs> Do you want to come over here and... Come here, Morgi, but... Come, come give us a hug that's not Mor on the rug. Morgi looks around I have to recharge my affirmation. Stand we don't hug on the rug. It's, the rug. it's not... <laughs> we don't uh, hug on oh. the rug. <laughs> um, is, is there something wrong with the, the rug? It's got Karzuk's symbol, and we don't like that very much. Uh, oh. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry. I I didn't know. It's not explicitly okay. Karzu. It's just greedy, but for the yeah, well, purpose. So Asher gives uh, Morgiva a, a, hug. a big hug. <laughs> Come here, uh, Greshi. <laughs> Come on, we have to hug Morgiv. Are you all? <laughs> nope. <laughs> this is a big group hug. 
All yeah. right. So <laughs> Morgiv actually doesn't know what to do with this gesture, <laughs> but he's just kind of standing there oh. uh, as you all like <laughs> bear hug him tightly. Uh, oh. Um. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Roshi un unleashes Phelan to, to dog pile on top of everyone. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and I think with that, uh, <laughs> you you leave Morgiv with a strange, warm, fuzzy feeling. Um, I, I don't know what I've done to be so worthy of such contact, but thank you. Thank you again. Uh, I, I hope I'll see you again. Please, stay safe. Do our best. Who? Take care of your people. No guarantees, but we will do our best. We'll, we'll all be rooting for be, you. Uh, strange, regardless of what happens up on this mountain. If, if you ever need to come back, don't, don't hesitate. We'll, we'll always be here to support you. Please. Good luck, heroes. And he'll wave. You salute and begin heading off into the tunnel. Doop. And I think that is as good a place as any to end for the evening. Yay! Well, with a little bit more information, we? <laughs> some fun encounters under their belt, <laughs> our heroes begin their way, uh, their climb up to the pinnacle of avarice. Uh, <laughs> the power of friendship is going to win, I know it. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. I hope you all had fun. We should be back next week, I think, uh, without looking mm -hmm. at times. Uh, the 30th, yep. Um, mm -hmm. So stay tuned till then. Uh, otherwise, peace out. Love you all. Good night.